maybe that's that's my mission in life too, to 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 make people aware of that that it's important to read books. Well, first of all, <laughs> thank you for having me. It's a great honor and a privilege to be here and talk about my book and also talk about my own Fulbright experience. Uh, let me briefly summarize my, my book. Mit Moby Dick Gaps Container Schiff is a collection of 29 life-changing book stories. So that means in each of these stories, somebody reads a book, always a different one, obviously, and it has a strong influence on their lives. Uh, in most of these stories, it, uh, the book helps that person to make a big decision in life, whether it be to pursue a certain career path or uh, what degree to enroll at university, how to fix a romantic relationship or the opposite, how to fix a broken heart. It's a very eclectic mix of, of stories, but they have one thing in common. At the core of each story is, is a real person. It's, it's based on real people and real events and real books, obviously. So a real person and the book and that book made that person do whatever he ends up doing in the story. Um, let me maybe briefly exemplify what I mean by life-changing by summarizing the first story, the, the title story of the book, Mit Moby Dick Gaps Container Schiff. In that story, a young student from Graz University, one of my old buddies actually, uh, he felt a bit lost and lonely in life. I've heard people use the term quarter-life crisis for this. Uh, and he read Moby Dick. Uh, and whilst he was reading Moby Dick, he had this epiphany this uh, moment of intuition that showed him, wow, that's exactly what I want to do in life too. I want to spend my life sailing the seven seas. I want to spend my life on the ocean. So after graduating from the University of Graz, my friend went to Germany to a nautical college. And now 10, 15 years later, he's captain of a container ship. And uh, so that's just one of the stories, one of 29 stories in the book. My message, I suppose, is books change lives. That's a tricky question. It's a tough one to answer, actually. <laughs> and it's the obvious one, too. After every book reading, people, that, that's always the first question I get. What book has changed your life? And I have a hard time answering that one because there have been dozens of books uh, that have maybe not changed my life, but helped me in my life. Made my life, I don't know, richer, more colorful, maybe less lonely, uh, uh, helped, provided some clarity. But a life-changing one has not been among them. There's an interesting observation I made whilst collecting stories for my book. Usually people who, who read a lot of books, so avid readers, they have a hard time naming that one book that changed their lives. Most of the people who told me stories for my book are not avid readers. They, they read the occasional book every now and then. So for them, it was easy to name that one book that changed their life. You want to hear a title though, right? I can give you a title. I don't have a life-changing book, but I have a, I have a favorite book. Uh, I have a favorite novel, and that would be Der Zauberberg by Thomas Mann, The Magic Mountain. It's the only novel that I keep rereading. Usually when I read a novel, I don't reread it because I know the ending, so what's the point? But that book has been on my desk in my, uh, on my, uh, on my, desk in my Prague apartment. And uh, normally, uh, whenever I have a rough day in school, or whenever I feel like my Prague life is kind of boring and lame, and, and, and you know, I need to think of something else, I start reading in that book again, and it immediately takes me to that sanatorium in the Swiss Alps. That's the setting of the novel, the secluded sanatorium, and all these weird people come together and talk about life. And it's a ventil to escape, uh, I, I suppose. So maybe that is life changing in, in, in a way. Whenever I, I read in that Zauberberg, I'm leaving Prague for a moment and I, I go to the Swiss Alps. So yeah, that's, that's my favorite novel. <laughs> At heart, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher who loves books uh, and literature of any kind, really. Uh, I'm a teacher who likes to take the occasional short story, poem, even a novel to my English classes. And it's very hard to 
and any teacher who's watching this can relate to it probably, it's very hard to motivate students to read books, to ignite that spark, to really create that enthusiasm that makes them want to read the short story or whatever uh, 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 um, piece of literature we're reading. I had always been trying to find good ways uh, to introduce literature to my, to my students, to motivate them to, to, to read it. Uh, and then something happened. Uh, I have to go back to the story that I uh, summarized. I wrote down that story. That was not the fir first story I collected, but the first story I, I, I wrote down. Uh, the story of my friend who is a captain of a container ship now. And I emailed that story to uh, some of my old buddies in Gaz, out of, out of nostalgia, I suppose. You know, that is one of the best years of my life. And their feedback surprised me. Uh, their feedback was, how about that? I had no idea that novel was so important for him. I think I'm going to read Moby Dick too now because I want to know why that book is so important for our old friend Martin. And that uh, I had an epiphany when they gave me that feedback. Uh, I realized that's how you make people read books. Uh, but you have to add a personal story. You see, had I said, Read Moby Dick. It's one of it's considered one of the greatest American novels of all times. They would have thought I was mental. You know, why well, you really want us to read that book? 800 pages, not much happens. You know, 200 years old. I'm not going to read that book. But because our friend Martin read that book and because it changed his life, they wanted to read that book too. So that's the idea for the book was born. Uh, and that's when I started collecting more stories of why people read books and 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 how it changed their lives. And and in the end, yeah, well, I have 29 stories uh, that are collected in that book. See, the, 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 the whole point of this book is to make people read not only my book, but the books that I mention in my book. So if I did everything right, people would read my book and then read Moby Dick or Harry Potter or Thomas Mann or uh, Edgar Allan Poe's poetry, uh, all the books that I mention. That's, that's my motivation. Books change lives and I, I suppose, I guess that's my message to the to the world and maybe that's, that's my mission in life too, to, to, to make people aware of that, that it's important to read books. I think it's very important to support the arts because I think the arts, any form of art, literature, composing, painting, and I'm talking as a layman, not as an expert, it's important for me to point that out, but I think it's underfunded all the time. It's very hard for artists to get a, and I can I, I can talk from experience. Uh, uh, I'm trying to look into, I've been trying to look into writer's residencies. It's very hard to find writer's residencies that are actually funded, are paid for. And I think it's important to support artists uh, because art art is important and it, sh it should be supported. And it's a, it's a nice coincidence too, that at the time when the Fulbright Commission started that new scholarship, uh, the, the specialists in the arts, uh, uh, at around that time, I got back in touch with the Fulbright Commission for the induction week in, in, in Selamsee. And around that time, my own book came out. So I, maybe we can call it fate and not coincidence, but I thought that now that's a good time now for me to get involved. And uh, oh, maybe now I can quote an important book uh, that taught me something. The great Austrian philosopher Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> wrote an autobiography a couple of years ago. And in that book, he he, he wrote down that sentence, don't just take, give something back. And that sentence sort of struck a chord with me. Uh, and uh, it's a very powerful sentence. I think now it's, you see the Fulbright Commission has given me so much by sending me on that journey that uh, uh, changed my life uh, eventually. So now it's time for me to give something back, I think. My own Fulbright experience had a tremendous impact on my life. Uh, there's the obvious impact. The very fact that I can sit here and do this interview in English without sounding too weird or too simple or too Austrian <laughs> is because the Fulbright Commission uh, enabled me to, to go to the United States and spend a year at the College of Worcester. And more than that, it enabled me to, to be immersed in college life for a year. And that has made my life as an English teacher much easier. Uh, so you have to know that if, you, if you're an English teacher in Austria, uh, in, in, in the books that we use in English classes in Austria, every second topic is on the United States. You know, American food, American sports, American high school life, American everything. And having lived there for a year and 
having been immersed there for a year has, has, has I think, given me more credibility or has made my classes a bit more authentic. I feel like now, now I know what I'm talking about when I talk about the United States. So that's the obvious impact uh, the Fulbright experience had, had on my own life. There is uh, beyond that, I think, and that's equally important, um, I found friends for life. Uh, I found some really good friends and we're still in touch after 16, 17 years. It's been a long time. Uh, and here's a cute story for you actually. Last summer, I went to Italy for a, for a writing residency for two weeks. And I knew that one of my old Worcester buddies ended up moving to Italy after her uh, uh, time at the College of Worcester in Ohio and she married an Italian guy. And we met up after 16 years and we spent an entire afternoon talking about the, you know, rem reminiscing the, about uh, the, 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 our, our time at, at the College of Worcester and how great it was and how important it was for our lives. And we have this WhatsApp group called Worcester Legends, where you know we keep texting each other, you know, little, uh, you know updates on our lives. It's, that's very important uh, to, to, to stay connected to all these people. So yes, uh, the, my Fulbright year, I think, was the best year in my adult life. I think I have three messages, if, uh, uh, if, if I'm allowed. The first message maybe to future donors. Uh, again, let me repeat the early sentence. Don't just take, give something back. If you're in a position to donate and to support the Fulbright course, do it. Uh, because it's a very noble thing what the Fulbright Commission does and I think it needs to be supported. If you're a future Fulbrighter, well, congratulations. You're about to embark on the best year of your life. That's fantastic. And the, the last message is to uh, book lovers. If you, because I'm collecting new stories for a second volume, right? So if you've read a book that has, uh, you know, swept you off your feet, that has changed your life, and that you think is so important that you want to share it with the rest of the world, please get in touch with me and tell me your story. I'm collecting stories. I want to write a second. Oh, I'm actually already writing a second book. I'd be happy if you, if you shared your story with me.